The Herman Miller Aeron and the Staples Hyken are two of the most popular mesh chairs in the world, but they live on opposite ends of the spectrum in terms of price, with the Aeron being about $1,600 fully loaded as we have it here, and the Hyken being around $200. Now, if you're like me, when comparing a cheap and expensive product, you want to know, is the value there to upgrade to the expensive product? Or am I better off just buying a bunch of the cheaper products even though it won't last as long? Maybe it's not as comfortable, maybe you're losing some functionality, but if the value is there, it might be worth it. So in this video, I'm going to compare them and we're going to try to answer that question of whether it's worth going with the Hyken or upgrading to the Aeron. So we're going to start out with the warranty on both of these chairs. The Hyken does have a really good warranty for the price, seven years, and it covers the entire chair. So they'll send replacement parts if anything goes wrong and it's going to be on you to fix it. But seven years of coverage on a sub $200 chair is an amazing warranty. So kudos to Staples on that. Herman Miller, in my opinion, they do have the best warranty in the industry with 12 years of coverage on the entire chair and they do have some added perks where if you're close enough to a Herman, Herman Miller dealer location they will actually send technicians to fix the chair so really really high-end warranty which is expected from a $1,600 product. Going next into the sizing of the two chairs Herman Miller offers three sizes on the Aeron A, B, and C. The middle size B is what we've got here it's designed to fit most of the population and it's going to be the most similar size to the Hyken. I'll just kind of show you what the Hyken looks like here in terms of sizing. I'm 5'9", about 180 pounds, just to give you an idea of what it will look like when you're in the chair. So you can see I fit in the chair pretty well. Seat fits me pretty well. A little bit narrower than I would prefer here, but still fits me pretty well. The seat height range is good for the majority of the population. Backrest goes high enough to support me as well as the headrest. So overall, this is a good fit for me. If I was taller, it might be a little bit of an issue, but if I was shorter, it shouldn't be a problem. So accommodates a wide range of people in one sizing there. The Aeron obviously is going to accommodate a much wider range of people because they have three sizes, but the size B does do a good job of fitting most people, in my opinion, aside from the seat depth, kind of like the Hyken. I would prefer it was a little bit more narrow here in terms of space. But overall, it still fits me pretty well. The build quality and overall look of the chairs is where we're going to see probably the biggest difference with the Hyken really kind of looking like a lower end chair with a lot of the two-tone plastic. The mesh is definitely not high end. You can actually see that it's kind of stained here. It actually came this way, like an orange stain throughout the mesh. Just It's like it got worn off and that's the color underneath or something. I'm really not sure, but um, definitely a lower end mesh throughout here. The armrests. There's not a ton of padding here. Just overall, you can tell that the components on the chair just aren't up to the standard, which is to be expected of a sub $200 chair. You know, cheap hooded casters, small casters. The base, in my opinion, looks cheap with the two-tone and the black on the edge, but overall, they have to keep the price down, so we can't expect it to have high-end components, but overall, just a ton of cheap plastic that doesn't really give it a lot of oomph in terms of feeling like it's solid, and it's definitely not super catching to the eye. When we flip over to the Aeron, in my opinion, this is probably going to be one of the most attractive chairs out there right now. Everything is designed to look and be high-end. It's why it's featured in the Museum of Modern Art. Very clean design, very clean lines, and then the components themselves are all very high-end. So this is also another chair that has a lot of plastic components on it, but all of the com plastic components on this end are going to be really high-end, custom-molded designs. You can just tell on the base alone. The base is just a much sleeker, just a much better design, much better looking, much better quality plastic, and just the functionality and the smoothness of the chair overall. It's just going to be top tier. And one area where we really see that is going to be the Pelico mesh. Probably the biggest difference between these two chairs. Really cheap mesh over here and probably the nicest mesh on the market with the Pelico mesh with the Aeron. So just a really big difference in terms of build quality. Now we're going to take a look at the adjustment package that you get on both chairs. And we'll start with the Hyken over here. So I showed you the first adjustment already in the sizing portion. That would just be the height adjustment. Like I said, it has a good range, especially on the low end, so short people up to probably six foot six one should be fine in this chair. It doesn't have depth adjustment, which is one thing I do wish it did have. The Aeron also doesn't have it, so it's not like it's missing out as compared to the Aeron. And then it has three tilt lock positions. So tilt lock is when it just locks it in place like this. You're gonna get three positions all the way back. The middle position I just showed you, and then fully upright, you can lock it there. And now one thing that you'll notice is that it does have a synchro tilt mechanism, meaning that the seat goes up with me at a smaller ratio than the back. So nice ergonomic position through the recline. And I will say that this is a smooth 
recline. Definitely smoother than most chairs under this price. And I think it's probably gonna be one of the biggest factors why it is so popular, is you are getting a pretty smooth mechanism. You can see how easy it is for me to recline like this. And you do have a nice tension control, which makes it more difficult or easier to recline depending on your preferences. So I do like the recline motion on this chair. The next adjustment we're gonna look at is going to be arms. So you get arm height adjustment. Not a great range, especially on the low end, but a few inches to try to dial it in. You're not gonna get any other adjustment with the arms though, so just height adjustment there. Flip it around for our back adjustment. We've got a little lumbar adjustment. It's probably, I don't know, it's kind of a difficult adjustment to do, but it's maybe an inch of height adjustment. Kind of gotta use both hands. You'll kind of see how flimsy this lumbar section is. In my opinion, it doesn't provide a ton of support, and it's kind of one of those adjustments that they've added to kind of say that it has something, but I'm not sure how much support it's actually providing there. And then the final thing that we're gonna look at is the headrest. You do get a two-way adjustable headrest, so height, if I could do it right, height, and then pivot. And so that's actually really nice to ensure that you can put the headrest right into the curve of your neck. And this headrest is actually pretty comfortable, I will say, for a mesh headrest. I'm not usually a fan of mesh headrests, but this one's actually pretty comfortable. And it's definitely gonna be probably the biggest advantage that the Hiken has over the Aeron because the Aeron just doesn't have a headrest option. You need to go aftermarket if you want a headrest. In my opinion, you need to pay 150, 200 bucks to get something decent from Engineered Now or Atlas. So definitely something to consider if you want the headrest. Now, when we're looking at the adjustments on the Aeron, so I'll show you the seat height one more time. Just give you another view on it with that adjustment and how it adjusts. Really big range, like I said before, covers that 95th percentile. Next thing we'll look at is going to be the recline on the chair. So a couple things that are very different between the Aeron and the Hiken. First is the way that it locks. The Hiken, you could see that when I locked it, it would just stay in one static position here. The Aeron has tilt limiter, which just means that when you lock it into a place, it will just limit the range. But I can still go halfway back or all the way back or fully upright, depending on where I put it. But it's not gonna lock it in one stagnant position, which is a little bit better in my opinion in terms of ergonomics because you still have free movement in your chair. And it also has forward seat tilt. Really rare adjustment where it just puts you in this forward position. Good for intense tasking, but not a super coveted adjustment. And then the last thing that I wanna to touch on with the recline is just the way that the chair reclines in general. So we talked about the synchro tilt mechanism on the Hiken, how it's a nice smooth action, good for under $200, but the Aeron's recline is kind of in a class of its own with other Herman Miller chairs because the smoothness and the way that you recline in the chair is almost like a rocking chair. And it's very, very easy, literally just to sit here and just do this. It's not a lot of work for me to do this. It's super comfortable and it really promotes a lot of movement and a lot of rocking in your chair. And so if you're someone that likes to be moving around, maybe you're watching a lot of media, this is a great chair for that and probably my favorite feature on the Aeron, especially as compared to the Hiken. Next up, we've got the arms. The armrests are actually very adjustable on the Aeron. You get three adjustments, the first being height, and they all have good ranges. So on the low end, high end, and then you also have depth, and then pivot, which also serves as a width adjustment. And so these are gonna fit almost anyone that uses the chair. I haven't used the chair in really any position that I felt the arms were in the way or couldn't accommodate the position I was trying to work in. So definitely one of my favorite set of arms is gonna be on the Aeron chair. Now looking at the lumbar, the lumbar is gonna be quite a bit different on the Aeron than the Hiken. You notice on the Hiken, it's gonna be more of a horizontal coverage area and then you can move it up and down. Whereas on the fully loaded Aeron, the Posture Fit SL, you can't move the system up and down. You can dial it in and out a little bit with the knob, increasing or decreasing the tension, but it just covers a much larger area, especially the vertical region down to the sack row and all the way up to the mid back. So overall, better coverage and better support than the Hiken. And you do have another option that you could go with if you wanted some height adjustment range on the Aeron. You can just go with the height adjustable lumbar support. So overall, in my opinion, you're getting better adjustments for the backrest on the Aeron than the Hiken, but the Hiken does have the headrest. Next up, we're gonna look at the comfort of both chairs, specifically looking at the comfort of the seat, the back, and the armrest, because that's what your body is touching the most. And in my opinion, the Aeron is gonna be quite a big upgrade in all three of those facets to the Hiken, starting off with the armrests. The armrest range, 
and adjustability. We've already touched on it. It's going to be very limited on the Hiken. And the Aeron, you're getting a ton of range and a ton of adjustability. So big, big jump in terms of comfort because it's able to accommodate much more positions. And the arm pads themselves are going to be much more comfortable than the Hiken arm pads. They're not hard plastic, but they don't give and they're not as soft as the Aeron arm pads. So you can see, I'll just put my elbow here. It doesn't really sink into the arm pad. And so like this position is not super comfortable and I would probably avoid that position and go more with something like this. Whereas the Aeron arm pads are super squishy and super comfortable. So this position here where I just put, you can see how much my elbow sinks in. This position here is actually really comfortable just to have your elbow in and overall super soft design, nice rounded corners. So in terms of just overall comfort, a huge win for the Aeron over the Hiken. Looking at the seat, very similar seat designs in terms of having that hard plastic edge around the whole chair, which I'm not a fan of. To, truth be told, I don't love mesh seats in general, but I will say that I did find the Aeron seat to be more comfortable, mainly for one reason, and that's because the Hiken has the old school Aeron mesh seat design. It's the classic design, which is ironic because this is a copy of the original Aeron classic design and Herman Miller's moved away from that design with the Aeron here. So if you come up here, you can see what I'm talking about. You've got this foam insert here, and this foam is meant to protect your legs from the hard bar. But what it does is it creates this crease right here. So when you sit in the chair, you will be sitting lower than the front of the seat. I'll just show you here. So when I sit down, you can see that I'm sinking lower than this seat and it creates a crease here. And this crease is really uncomfortable on your legs. And I found this crease to be basically the deal breaker for this chair because it made my legs lose circulation and start to go tingly and numb after like an hour of using it. And so it just wasn't practical for me to use. And the new design on the Aeron Remastered went away from this and they don't have the foam insert and it's got more of a pitched design. And so you avoid that creasing sensation and it just gives you a much more comfortable position overall. So you can see it doesn't have the foam. There's no foam there and you don't have a crease and you still don't come into contact with this bar. So overall just more comfortable. And the final thing is going to be the backrest, which we've already touched on a little bit with the lumbar. In my opinion, you're just getting better support overall with the Aeron, no matter which, which option you choose. And I would argue that if you went with the no lumbar support option, you're still getting better support than the Hiken. I actually have used the Aeron without lumbar support quite a bit, and I actually really like it just because of the natural curve of the backrest. It's still very supportive. The mesh is much softer, so you sink into it more than on the Hiken, and it's not as coarse as the Hiken is. You can, you, it, you can't see it on video, but just touching it, it's very coarse and it's not very comfortable on the skin. So just overall, pure comfort standpoint, from the seat to the back to the arms and also the recline function we touched on earlier, the Aeron's just gonna be a much more comfortable chair overall. So finally, we're gonna look at the value proposition by going from the Hiken up to the Aeron. Now the Aeron is going to be much more expensive. You can buy eight Hikens for the price of an Aeron, but in my opinion, the Aeron is probably gonna be the better investment overall, just because you're gonna get a ton of longevity out of an Aeron. It does have a 12 year warranty, so you're guaranteed 12 years, but we've seen these chairs last a lot longer on the field. I think that a realistic estimate is probably 15 to 20 years on an Aeron. The Hiken, it does have a seven year warranty, but I think a typical life cycle of a chair like this is probably gonna be around three years. So you could save some money by going the hiking route and replacing it every three years for 200 bucks. You're gonna come out ahead of the Aeron, but you're not gonna be sitting in a chair like the Aeron for all that time, more comfortable, more adjustable, more ergonomic. So in my opinion, you're getting better bang for your buck by going with the expensive chair, but if you only have $200 to spend, the hiking is not a terrible option.